This this is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. We're delighted today to be joined with Bilal Ali. Back out June seventeenth. Um, first of all, how's everything been? How's things been, mate? Things been good. You know, Alhamdulillah. You know, just been training hard um, with uh, Will Jones, Ian. You know, it's been great. Can't complain. You know, training is what I love doing, and um, I'm more than happy to wake up every day and come in and train. So. How was uh, Ramadan for you? How did that sort of go with training? You know what? It was good, you know. Um, a lot of people like to me, how are you doing it? Because I was training about three, four times a week. But um, it was a bit difficult. That's why I was coming certain times. I think about two hours before you open your fast. But like I said, I always told myself, you know, um, it's possible. It's just all in your mind. So I was train. You know what? It's crazy. It was on a track the other day. I was actually better in Ramadan than I am now. So I don't know how it worked, but you know. What is it like, you know, it's hard for me to understand being a non-Muslim, but being a Muslim and training during Ramadan, even, you know, people have fights in, in Ramadan. Look at Haney, you know, a lot of fighters that all have a fight during Ramadan. How, is, is that something difficult when you're sort of training? Like, do you get tired more often, not being able to have water as well and things like that? You know what, it's so crazy. Yeah. I'm going to bring this up. I said this in a, on an Instagram post uh, that I put up on my Instagram, right? and um, I said something like, the Muslims, years ago, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, they used to war while they were fasting. So I always told myself, what's a training session when you're fasting? So that's the mentality I come with. And to be honest, it helps him so much. If anything, that's what makes me train harder. Because um, I think of that, and that's what you know takes me here and gives me that extra energy. I think that's why in Ramadan, the track was way better than it was now. But um, I think that's the mentality that um, I get in go in the gym with while I'm fasting. And you know, it might get a bit difficult because you need some water and that, but then I always tell myself, I'm not gonna die while I'm training. I'll probably faint, but I'm not gonna die. <laughs> so um, yeah, as long as I'm not gonna die, it's cool. Do you feel like it's, um, do you feel like you're more focused, not only just in training, but yeah. to your faith and everything during, during sort of Ramadan? Is that sort of something that you focus on? Not just being, you know, focused on your faith, but in your training as well. <coughs> during Ramadan, the Bilal Ali is a lot more focused one. 100%. You know what? That's a good question because a lot of people don't realise that because where you're, in a way, you're disciplined anyway without the food, without the drink, I think that discipline comes with everything. Involving with training, with your food, with your drink. So you're kind of more in a zone where you're, you're just more focused. So I think it 100% helps me more in Ramadan. It sounds so crazy, but yeah, no, it's the truth, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's, that, that's what keeps me going, my faith, that mentality that I told you about, about the Muslims 100, 100 years ago. So it all kind of comes together and um, it helps 100%, yeah. Yeah, because it's something I've always said to my Muslim friends that I've yes. got is, you know, whilst it's not obviously, I, I don't fast, but um, it's something I've always yeah, admired, the discipline, you know, Muslims are very disciplined people in general, but, Ramadan, it's extremely more, you know, I've, I've got friends that are, that, you know, ridiculously disciplined during, you know, Ramadan and, and it's, it's interesting to hear that from your point where it's difficult for them, you know, in general, um, during fasting, let alone being a professional athlete like you are. Yeah, and you said it, um, that's why so many people are asking me, how you doing it, how you doing it, but I pretty much um, told him with that one post that I put up, that's my mentality when I go in and... Not even with Ramadan, but with anything in life. Um, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. It's all in the mind. Sometimes some people might think boxing is even too hard. Some people even ask me, how are you doing boxing? But it's the mind, it's the courage. You know, you need courage in this sport. You need courage in life. So without courage, without belief, without faith, you wouldn't really get nowhere. Back out on June 17th, Johnny Clark show. Um, you know, in Essex, must feel good to sort of be back out there and you know, being as active as you possibly can. Yeah, and I'll tell you why I feel it's even more great is because my debut was the last time I fought in Brentwood and now I'm fighting in Brentwood again. So it's amazing. And to have Johnny Clark promoting the show, promoting us, he's even looking after us, which is a, a blessing. So, um, yeah, it's all a blessing and I'm excited. How important is it now that you really kick on um, with your career? With Will Jones, with this gym, you know, you've got, I can't, I can list off so many names where you can all take things from them. Um, must be good for you developing in your career where there's so many pros here that you, you can all take bits of their game and add it to your game. Yeah, and that's what it is. I said it in the previous interview, um, I said, the environment that you're in, I think it plays a big part. If you're around people that don't work hard, depending on who you are, um, you might not work hard. But if you're around people that push and push all the time, I'm the sort of person who, if someone's working hard, I would always want to try to work harder. 
So you know, to have people like um, these professionals around me, who's got belts around their waist, um, it's even bigger motivation for me. And end of the year, that's my plan to um, win a belt and show people what I can do. What would you say, you know, what is the most that you learn not only in the ring but out of the ring so far in your career, being with all these guys, you know, is there a lot that you learn outside the ring as well rather than just in the ring? 100%. I think boxing alone has saved me um, from a lot. Um, with my past, with what I was doing before and um, just, I mean, the area that I'm from, um, I think boxing has taught me so much. You know, it's so crazy because you spoke about faith earlier. I think boxing, in a way, has helped me with my faith, with the way you speak to people, with the way you treat people. Um, I don't know, like, it's, it's so weird, but it definitely helps you. And, and Islam teaches you to even keep fit and keep healthy. And boxing 100% does that, so. You know, it's one thing I've always said is, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what your background is, anyone can walk through the doors and anyone can change their life. And it's a special thing about boxing. You just said there about boxing changing your life and saving your life. Yeah. It's so special that, you know, you've seen guys that have been in, you know, prison for many years come out and have a career in boxing. You know, I could list off so many boxers, you know, from this side of the world to the American side of the world to everywhere, where it shows how special that this sport is that no matter who walks through the doors, you're judged on how, you know, you're not judged on anything, really. Yeah, and... Like I said, um, anyone can walk through a boxing gym, but like I said earlier, it's all about faith, courage, you know, you just want to do it. If you want to do it, then do it. But um, like I said, it's not about where you're from, how you grew up, it's just about what you want to do. You know, you got, you got some families that are rich, that got money, but they still prefer to come to a boxing gym and fight. So if you love it, you love it. Definitely. Just looking back on you, you know, since you turned over pro now, how would you sort of reflect on your career so far? You said you want to, you know, belts at the end of the year, but when you look back on it and you look at since you turned over pro, how would you sort of honestly assess your career? I think when I started off with my career, I think that was my best time so far in terms of, well, no, I'll say that because my career started off actually quite fast, you know, my my debut, then my second fight happened, my third, my fourth. But in a way, um, I lost focus, you can say, um, on the way, because I think everything came too fast for me. Um, remember, I'm somebody with three amateur fights, and when things are coming too fast, you never realize, but you're losing focus. And um, now, I think I'm more mature as a human being. So being with a team now, this is the best thing right now for me, because I've had fights back to back, um, as soon as I joined there, I remember like, after two months, Will said, you know what, you're ready to go back out there. I remember he gave me two fights back to back. I had a fight, came back, had another fight, and he said, you know what, you're more than ready for a title, but that's why you got the team for a reason. There's always a timing for it. So he said, by the end of this year, he goes, you're ready. Have some fights, learn on the job, and before you know it, boom, um, I'll get that belt. But so far, there has been some bumps on the way, I think, but I think also everything happens for a reason. So maybe some people they think, oh, what happened to his career at one point? But to me, I think maybe it was for the best. And that's what keeps me going, so yeah. Because I know it's a sort of a difficult thing for you to talk about, you know, but obviously you, you did take a loss. And what would you say you learned from that? And losing that O, is that sort of like a, how did, that, how did you deal with that mentally? Um, you know what, if I'm honest with you, if I'm honest with you, I never ever thought about losing. So I still remember that day when I lost. Oh, like, it was such a mad moment for me. Like, I still remember, because where was the lockdown moment? It was lockdown. Nobody could have, nobody was even sitting next to me, even in the changing room. So I was actually by myself. So at that moment, it felt like a dream. I can't even explain the feeling, but. And I remember it didn't really hit me because I was getting so many phone calls and a lot of people's phone calls I didn't want to pick up. But I remember my friends called me, they said, we'll come pick you up. They came, I remember I was packing my bag, wherever. I left, I went outside. And I remember it just didn't feel real until a couple of days afterwards. And then um, I remember I was seeing um, videos, interviews of people saying, oh, we thought he was gonna be the next big thing and da da da. And that probably, that probably got to me more than anything because I felt like I let, I let, um, I let a lot of people down um, by doing that. But I know what I went through at them stages. I know the work that I didn't put in in them stages. 
So it was all my fault. But in a way, I always said, Alhamdulillah for everything. Everything happened for a reason. And I think it was the best for me at that time. So, and it definitely made me who I am today. And it made me realize, you know, everyone's gonna be with you when you, when you lose. And everyone's gonna be with you when you're winning. So that's what it is. You just gotta keep moving forward in life. And that's what it is. Would you say, you know, when you, when you read things and you listen to things where people are saying, I thought it was the next big thing, this and that, and you said that you felt like let people down. Did you let that sort of strive you to achieve more and strive to say, I can't accept this anymore? And almost looking at the loss in like a positive way where it's driven you to even work even harder? Yeah, and I looked at it in a way, I want to prove to people that what they thought wasn't, it wasn't, it was real what they thought. Um, I'm still confident in myself. I'm still improving day by day. And I'm going to show people that what they thought was real. And 100%, um, like you said, I took that as fuel. And um, it's definitely feeding the fire right now, so it's good. Well, Bilal, I know you're sort of in a rush, you had to go off, but thank you for your time, mate. Really appreciate this interview. It means a lot, bro. Thank you. Top man, appreciate it.